Hey guys, what's up everybody? Good to see you again on this week's episode here on my channel. I'm Patrick and today we're gonna talk about the three very essential things in photography you should know how to use without even thinking about them. Shutter speed, aperture and ISO. If you're serious about your photography, there is absolutely no way around learning the ins and outs of these fundamental three parameters and I'm going to help you understand what they do and how they work together. So hang on. When you're starting out with photography and you just got your first camera, you will find yourself facing lots of questions. There are so many new buttons and settings to dial in. It can be a little bit overwhelming at first, um, but you will quickly notice that it always comes down to shutter speed, aperture and ISO. You can't use one without using the others properly because they go hand in hand. And in order for you to become proficient with your camera, take great photos and master the manual mode, you need to know what they do individually and how they complement each other. So let's start with shutter speed. Shutter speed sets the duration of how long you are exposing your shot. Having a high shutter speed opens and closes that shutter curtain really quick and that helps if you want to capture fast paced actions happening in front of your lens. When you have trouble getting sharp shots and your images turn out blurry all the time, increasing your shutter speed will very much likely fix that issue in most situations. For example, if you're shooting your pets, your kids, sport events, um, anything else, moving fast and unpredictable, you want to set a high shutter speed to freeze that action and get super sharp and crisp results. Let me show you an example. My girlfriend was kind enough to do some headbanging for me while I was taking a few pictures and here are two shots with a shutter speed of 1 over a 50th of a second. As you can see, her hair and her face are blurry due to her movements. And here are two more shots, but with a shutter speed of 1 over a hundredth of a second. That increase in shutter speed totally freezes the action and there is no more motion blur in the latter two images. Another thing to consider when setting your shutter speed is your focal length. Shooting on a 7200 telephoto lens makes your camera way more sensitive to camera shake than shooting on a 16 to 35 ultra wide angle lens. As a rule of thumb, um, set your shutter speed at least as fast as one divided by your focal length in order to get sharp photos when you're shooting handheld. That would be one over a 50th of a second at 50 mil, one over a hundredth of a second at 100 mil, and so on. I think you can do that math. But keep in mind that the faster you set your shutter speed, the darker your images are going to be because the light hits the sensor for a shorter period of time. And that is when our next parameter comes into play. So let's talk about aperture. Aperture basically defines how wide you open your lens. A low F number means that your aperture is wide open, you are letting lots of light in, and in return that allows you to shoot with really fast shutter speeds without underexposing your shot. Shooting wide open also results in a shallow depth of field, which means that only the subject you set your focus on is sharp. The background becomes blurry and you get that nice bouquet, which is a very effective and widely used technique to isolate a subject and draw the viewer's attention towards a certain element in your picture. Increasing the F number, respectively narrowing the aperture, lets less light into your lens, your exposure becomes darker, but in return, you get more sharpness in the background. Let me show you another quick example here. I placed some random stuff on the table, set my focus on the Jimi Hendrix mug and shot the first picture at f2.8. As I'm increasing the f number, you can see that the background becomes sharper and sharper with each step. I was using a tripod here because the last picture was taken at f22 and that requires a really long shutter speed to get enough light on the sensor. Okay, there is one more thing. When you hear photographers talking about a fast lens, they are usually referring to how wide a particular lens is capable of opening up its aperture. Top of the line zoom lenses usually have a maximum opening of f2.8, while prime lenses can open up even further to f1.4 or even f1.2. Um, this makes them a very good choice in low light because having that wide of an opening almost makes them see in the dark, resulting in a superior low light performance and that is also why they are so expensive. But do you need one of these to take stunning pictures in low light environments? 
No, not necessarily, because we still got our third parameter, which is ISO. ISO lets you set how sensitive your camera reacts to the light in your photo. Most DSLR and mirrorless cameras have a base ISO of 100, which means that this is the least sensitive setting, giving you the cleanest image possible with rich colors, sharp details and low noise levels. Shooting with low ISO settings usually works good when you are outside in bright daylight or if you have powerful lights in a studio, but as soon as your environment gets darker, you will have to increase your ISO to amplify the available light in order to get a proper exposure. Now I want you to think of a regular audio amplifier. What happens if you crank it up too much? It gets noisy and the music loses quality. And that is exactly what happens to your photos if you push your ISO too much. You are losing detail and grainy artifacts known as noise are becoming visible, especially in the darker areas of your shot. This is where full frame sensors have a major advantage over crop format sensors. Being physically larger, they allow you to shoot with ISO settings up to 6400 and still retain an acceptable level of noise, while crop format sensors are pretty much on their limit at ISO 1600. Being that sort of a light amplifier, ISO can be used to compensate for light you lose when you increase your shutter speed or your aperture. Vice versa, you can bring down your ISO if you let more light in by opening up your aperture or setting a slower shutter speed. I always try to keep my ISO as low as possible and just as high as necessary and I think that is also a pretty good advice to you guys out there on how you should work that parameter. In the end, I have one analogy which probably helps you understand shutter speed, aperture and ISO even better. Think of it like an eyeball where shutter speed is your blinking speed, aperture is your pupil dilation and ISO is how much light you are sensitive to. So that's it from me for today guys. Please give me a thumbs up if this video helped you to understand camera basics better. Drop me a comment if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel for more content on photography in the future. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Bye bye.